In the previous video, I showed you how to load a GLB model into our scene. And in this video, I'm going to show you an alternative way. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtubs and welcome back to my channel. If you are not familiar with this series, I highly recommend following it from the start so you know what we are doing. Like I said in the previous video, we use the use loader as well as the GLTF loader to load our tree model. And this is the method we used. But because this is a React project and we are using JSX code, we can make use of a tool that's going to convert our GLTF model into JSX. So in the React 3 Fiber documentation, here we have the loading model documentation that we were following. But if you scroll down a little bit, you can find this interesting repo over here. This tool does have a CLI, but also a browser version. So if you click on this link, then it will take you to the browser tool where we get to convert our GLTF files into JSX code. In order to use the tool, we are just simply going to find our model. Here's our tree and drag it and drop it in here. Now we can see that the component code has actually been generated for us. And here is the tree. The GLTF loader makes use of a preload function so that you can just simply use it and it will try its best to load it before it is displayed. Then seeing that we are using TypeScript, we can click on this drop down arrow and include types. Now we can take this code and add it to our scene. Firstly, go ahead and copy all of the code, go back to our program and in the components folder, create a new tree.tsx uh, file, then paste it. And instead of just being a model, I'm going to call this my tree model. This is so that the tree doesn't conflict with our other tree over here. Now in the index file, Let's go ahead and import the tree model and then we can simply add it to our scene as well. If we save this and try and run the application, we will see an error and that's because it cannot find the tree in our public folder. And the reason is because our models is sitting in a models folder. So in the tree component, all we need to do is add models over here to have it point to the correct file as well as here at the bottom. Save it and then once we refresh it should be fine. Both models are being loaded of the exact same tree and they also on the exact same position. So in the code what we can do is maybe set the new tree models position so we can give it a position and let's make it two by zero by zero. Now that we have this, we can go back and you see the one tree has moved over. Now you can go ahead and use this tool, which is great. But if you feel more techy and you want to use the CLI, you can go to the GitHub repo. And here it shows us how we can make use of this tool as well. Right here, the command would be npx gltf jsx and the path to the model with some options. So in the code, in the terminal, let's press command C to exit the application. And then let's type in npx gltf jsx and give it the model's path. I'm going to right click and say copy path, paste it in here. And then at the very end, I'm just going to add the dash T flag for types. It will ask you to install the gltf uh, tool, but once that's done, it will create it. And here we can see is a new file and this is our tree. You can decide which is the best way for you to use this tool. For now, I'm going to delete this tree. I don't really need that. And I just want to focus on our tree component that we've created uh, this way. And also at the bottom, I might want to run npm run dev again, just to start up the application. However, why would you like to create a JSX component instead of importing a tree or a model in the way that we have done it over here in the previous video? Well, I would say it comes all down to your use case. 
Importing a model like this and rendering it to the scene is perfectly fine. The JSX way just gives you a bit better access in a React format to the underlying children. Here we can visually see that we have got access to the tree bark as well as the leaves. And let's say we wanted to interact with the leaves turning them a different color if we click on them. We can achieve this by using React. So here at the top I'm going to create a variable and we'll call this color and then also set color. This will be making use of use state. And initially we'll set this to pink. Then in the mesh itself, we would access the property of the material color and set this to our state variable over here. Then we will add an on click event. And we will say if we click on this object, let's go and set the color to uh, maybe green. If we save that and go to our scene, and then if I click on the leaves, you'll see them turning green. And now we have an interactive scene. And that's what makes it so cool working with JSX and React State. Although this is a very nice way of doing it, you can still do it with this imported model. It is just a bit more involved. And that's the two different ways. If you want to go for a, maybe a product, viewing and you want to change some cool colors and you want to do it a very easy and fluent JSX way, then you would go and import a model like this. Um, I prefer this way and this is what we will be using for our metaverse and we might be using uh, the JSX uh, tool at some later point. As always, time for some cleanup. So I'm going to take the code that we've implemented in the previous video and cut that out and then go and place it in here, my tree model replacing the JSX version. At the bottom, let's remember to export this as default and then hover over use loader and let's import this as well as our GLTF loader. I am also going to refer to this component as our trees and also changing it here in the file. And the reason is because we might want to populate a lot of trees. So back in the index file let's remove these imports now and also our tree model import we now rather want to import our trees now that we have this let's copy that and replace our components with the trees save it and i also feel that we can get rid of the textured spheres that we've created with our textures remove that as well and then just remember to remove the textures in here. And if you can remember, we created this animated box we're now going to remove as well. This is so that we can keep our code clean. And if we look at our scene, we're already starting with the Metaverse build. So before we know it, we're going to have a wonderful world to walk around in. This also brings us to the end of this video and if you enjoyed the content, leave me a like, comment below and remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.